Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and once again, we're going to talk X-Wing. In the last video of this type, I did a preview for Wave 5 and 6, though there wasn't a lot of information on Wave 6 at the time, so I really couldn't show as much off to you as I am going to today. Um, though, just be warned, you may see some repeat cards that I already showed you in the last video. Hopefully you guys won't mind. Um, it's important to note that all of the pictures and cards seen here came from the Fantasy Flight website under their news articles. So if you want to see uh, some of these pictures again, or if you want to read about them, you can go to the Fantasy Flight website, check out their news articles, and um, yeah, just read all about it. So here we are, Wave 6, that includes the IG-2000 M3-A Interceptor, Most Wanted, and the Star Viper. Again, none of these are out yet, so this is going to be a quick preview. Everything that you uh, are about to see here is subject to change, obviously. So uh, let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, so Scum and Villainy, you've got the Illicit Upgrade, and you've got the Salvaged Astromech Upgrade. Basically, that prevents the Imperials or the Rebels from using these particular upgrades. On to the next slide, this is the Most Wanted. Again, you may see some repeat pictures in here, some repeat cards. Uh, but for those of you that haven't seen the last video of this type, um, hey, you're in for a, you know, a nice little treat. So here's another picture for you, all the different uh, ships. You've got a Z-95, a Y-Wing, and another Z-95 in this particular Most Wanted expansion. A lot of different cards here. This uh, expansion also comes with some other pilot cards that um, are for the Slave 1 ship, and I think it was the Hawk-290 or whatever it's called. Um, you don't get those ships in this particular expansion, but if you have those ships already, you can use those pilot cards um, in conjunction with those ships. So here's a look at the Z95s. You've got uh, Nadru. I'm going to be butchering these names. Nadru, Sulak. Um, again, the stats are the same. 2, 2, 2, 2. Uh, pilot skill 7 when attacking if there are no other friendly ships at range 1 or 2. Roll 1 additional attack die. So basically, this guy he likes to work by himself. He's got a focus target lock and some upgrades down there. Cost of 17. Over on the right, Kato Liachos. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to be butchering these. Pilot skill 5. At the start of the combat phase, you may remove one focus or evade token from another friendly ship at range 1 to 2 and assign it to yourself. So now, while the guy on the left likes to work by himself, the guy on the right uh, likes to work on a team. So a lot of different uh, combinations that are possible with this uh, particular expansion. Further down, you've got the Black Sun Soldier and the Binari Pirate. I think that's how you pronounce it. Again, I'm going to be butchering stuff left and right. Um, the costs are 13 and 12, respectively. Nothing crazy here. No special abilities. Um, the Y-Wings, you've got Cavill. Uh, the stats, 2, 1, 5, 3. Again, just like the Rebel Y-Wing. When attacking a ship outside your firing arc, roll one additional attack die. So this guy would really like to use the Blaster Turret or the Ion Cannon Turret. Um, focus, target lock, some upgrades down there. You've got that illicit, um, or that, uh, what is that astromech thing called? The salvaged astromech upgrade. There we go. Okay. So yeah, he's got that. Um, cost of 24, Drea Renthal. Um, again, stats are the same. After you spend a target lock, you may receive one stress token to acquire a target lock. Really cool. Um, so that guy uh, would probably benefit from like push the limit and other such things that uh, encourage stress tokens. All right, uh, cost of 22. Syndicate thug, nothing special here. Pilot skill two, cost of 18. All right, like I said, um, while the Fire Spray 31 ship is not in this upgrade pack. If you already have the ship, you can use these cards. Boba Fett, you can use him. When attacking or defending, you may reroll one of your dice for each enemy ship at range one. So he likes to be in the thick of things. Um, head has a cost of 39. That's pretty expensive. Um, stats seem to be the same. 3, 2, 6, 4. Cath Scarlet Fire Spray 31. Uh, when attacking a ship inside your auxiliary firing arc, the backside, roll one additional attack die. So while most most of the time you're going to keep your front to you know enemy ships, Cath Scarlet likes to keep her backside to uh, enemy ship. I'm not going to touch on that anymore. Uh, pilot Skill 7 cost of 38 down there. You can see that. Uh, Iman Azamine from the Star Wars X-Wing Alliance video game on the PC. Uh, when dropping a bomb, you may use the hard 3, straight 3, or hard uh, right 3 template instead of the uh, straight 1 template. So basically more uh, options when dropping bombs. Cost of 36, and Mandalorian Mercenary, pilot skill 5, cost of 35. Nothing fancy as far as upgrades go. Oh, if I'm going too quickly at any time, just pause the video and you can take a look at the uh, the cards yourself.
All right, Dace Bone Arm Hawk 290. When an enemy ship at range one to three receives one, at least one ion token. If you are not stressed, you may receive one stress token to cause that ship to suffer one damage. So basically, he's great uh, to use in conjunction with like an ion cannon or uh, other ships that might have an ion turret, that kind of thing. Uh, pilot skill seven, cost of 23. Payload God Ali. Uh, <laughs> Wow. Could they make these names any harder to pronounce? Uh, probably. Um, you've got a cost of 20 down there, pilot skill 5. At the start of the combat phase, you may remove one focus or evade token from an enemy ship at range 1 to 2 and assign it to yourself. Pretty cool. Sort of works like Wes Jansen, only you actually get to keep the focus that you remove. Really cool. All right. Uh, Torquil Mux. Uh, pilot skill 3. At the end of the activation phase, choose one enemy ship at range 1 to 2. Until the end of the combat phase, treat that pilot skill value as 0. Really cool because um, he'll be able to shoot last, uh, the enemy that you uh, specify. So really cool. So if you have like a pilot skill of 9 that you're fighting against, you can make his skill 0. <laughs> Which would really ruin his day, you know. All right, so some of the upgrade cards that are available are for dash B11. When attacking, if you have a target lock on the defender, you may spend the target lock to choose any or all defense dice. The defender must reroll all the chosen dice. Okay, R4 aggro mech. When attacking, after you spend a focus token, you may acquire a target lock on the defender. Not bad. You may treat all three speed maneuvers as green maneuvers. That's the unhinged astro mech. Really cool. BTL A4 Y-Wing. It's a title. You cannot attack ships outside your firing arc. After you perform a primary weapon, weapon attack, you may immediately perform an attack with a secondary weapon. So, rather than using your blaster turret or ion cannon turret to, a, to attack in 360 degrees, um, as long as you keep the enemy in your forward firing arc, you can shoot twice. Once with your primary weapon, once with your secondary, or possibly twice, you know, with your secondary weapon. Alright, so bomb loadout, Y-Wing only, limited, uh, your upgrade bar gains the bomb icon. Now it's about time, Y-Wing should be able to use bombs. Outlaw tech, scum only, limited, after you execute a red maneuver, you may assign one focus token to your ship. So again, um, a lot of these cards seem to um, allow you to use stress um, in a beneficial way, which is really cool. Uh, and Drasta, I keep saying that really cool, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited for this. Um, Andrasta, Fire Spray 31 only. I think, again, it's Iman Azamine ship. Uh, your upgrade bar gains two additional bomb upgrade icons. Genius, if you are equipped with a bomb that can be dropped before you reveal your maneuver, you may drop the bomb after you execute the maneuver instead. Okay, Greedo, Scum only. The first time you attack each round and the first time you defend each round, the first damage card dealt is dealt face up. So you can get some nice critical hits on somebody that way if you want. Hotshot Blaster, attack value of 3, range 1 to 2. As an attack, discard this card to attack one ship, even a ship outside your firing arc. Okay, that's pretty powerful. Uh, for an upgrade cost of 3, that's really good. Salvaged Astromech, when you are dealt a damaged card with the ship trait, you may immediately discard that card. Sort of like Determination, um, only this is for the ship trait. Alright, um, all right, so here's a look at the Star Viper. Okay, so out to the right-hand side, you can see the available actions in the maneuver dial. You've got focus, target lock, barrel roll, boost. And if you're looking at the maneuver dial, you may notice that there are two weird red icons there. That is uh, Segner's Loop. It's like a K-turn, only you can use a slight turn maneuver to use the K-turn. It's really cool. I'm, I'm anxious to try that out. All right. Um, I really need to stop saying that. Really cool. <laughs> Oh, I love this game. It's hard not to say it, you know? Uh, Prince Zeiser, uh, pilot skill 7, when defending a friendly ship at range 1, may suffer one uncancelled hit or crit result instead of you. That has a cost of 31. So basically, this, this particular pilot here can use other ships as meat shields. Gurry on the right, at the start of the combat phase, if you are at range 1 of an enemy ship, you may assign one focus token to your ship. That's really nice. Um, the stats on these ships, 3, 3, 4, 1, probably... Um, probably vulnerable to crits, but the high agility value will hopefully offset that. Further down, the Black Sun Enforcer. No special ability there, cost of 25. And a quick look at the Bodyguard upgrade. At the start of the combat phase, you may spend one focus token to choose a friendly ship at range 1 with higher pilot skill than you. Increase its agility value by 1 until the end of the round. That's, that's really nice. And that's without using um, an action. That's a passive ability. You've also got these other upgrade cards here. I Again, I think I covered these in the last video. Virago, your 
upgrade bar gains the, I think, sensor and illicit upgrade icons. You cannot equip this card if your pilot skill value is 3 or lower. Accuracy connector, or corrector, not connector. Accuracy corrector, let's try that again. When attacking, you may cancel all of your dice results. Then you may add two hit results to your roll. Your dice cannot be modified dur again during this attack. Inertial dampeners, when you reveal your maneuver, you may discard this card to instead perform a white uh, maneuver. Basically, you just sit still. The Lambda class shuttle has that, but it's a red maneuver, so this is a white maneuver instead. Then receive one stress token. Alright, a look at the M3-A Interceptor. And again, you can see some of the cards that might come with this expansion, and some of the tokens too. Off to the right-hand side, you can see uh, an upgrade card, Heavy Skick Interceptor. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, your upgrade bar gains the uh, Heavy Laser Cannon, Proton Torpedo, or the missile upgrade icon. Some of those icons are a little hard to read, but uh, yeah, I think those are the right ones. All right, so here are some of the pilots that are included. Uh, Surisu, M3-A Interceptor. Stats are 2-3-2-1, so high agility, fairly good attack, sort of like a TIE Fighter. Um, although instead of having three hull, it has two hull and one shield, so a little bit better than the TIE Fighter, I think. When another friendly ship at range 1 is defending, it may reroll one defense die. That's a nice little passive ability there. Focus, target lock, barrel roll, evade action. Cost of 20. The uh, one on the right, Leighton Ashera. After you defend against an attack, if the attack did not hit, you may assign one evade token to your ship. That's... wow. Okay, um, no upgrades though down there. Cost of 18. And then some of the upgrade cards, Mangler Cannon, 3 attack value, range 1 to 3, attack, attack 1 ship. When attacking, you may change one of your hit results to crit results. Uh, Fletchette Cannon, another uh, value of uh, 3 as far as attack goes, range 1 to 3. Um, if this attack hits, the defender suffers 1 damage, and if the defender is not stressed, it also receives 1 stress token. So it's sort of like those Fletchette Torpedoes. Um, then cancel all dice results. Okay. Alright, the IG-2000 has the Focus, Target Lock, Boost, and Evade, and you can quickly see the um, the red maneuvers over there, again, uses that Segner's Loop, or whatever it's called. Um, further down, some of the tokens and the cards that come with this, as you can see, it's a, a large ship from the looks of it. And here we go, Segner's Loop on the right-hand side, like I was explaining before. Um, and you can even see the picture on the reference card. Again, it's like a K-turn, only it uses the slight bank maneuver, or whatever it's called. So that's, that's really nice. I'm, again, I'm anxious to try that out. Alright, some of the ships that are available, um, IG-88A. Um, you'll notice that in this, uh, all of them have the same name, IG-88, but you'll see the letter at the end is different. So here's the A, um, stats 3344, so great stats all around. After you perform an attack that destroys the defender, you may recover one shield. Again, really cool. If you have a lot of TIE fighters that you're fighting against, that would be ideal. If you're fighting like high value rebel ships this may not be a good ability to have but the more ships that you're fighting against with lower hit points the better so that has a cost of 36 and you can see all the upgrades that are available down there and here's the IG-88B on the right uh, again same stats once per round after you perform an attack that does not hit you may perform an attack with an equipped secondary weapon so that that's real I think I like that better than the other one all right, and all of these have the same pilot skill too. They have a cost or a pilot skill of six, and it looks like the cost is the same too, thirty-six, thirty-six. All right, here is the IG-88C. Again, pilot skill six, cost of thirty-six. Um, after you perform a boost action, you may perform a free evade action. So basically, if you want to perform an evade, might as well take that boost. On the right-hand side, IG-88D, you may execute a Segner's loop. Maneuver using the corresponding hard three or hard uh, hard three left or hard three right template. So instead of using the slight turn, you'll be using the hard bank. Again, same pilot skill, same cost. This will be an interesting expansion, I think. All right, some of the upgrade cards. I think this was covered already in the last video. But for the sake of those that uh, haven't seen it, Dead Man Switch, when you are destroyed, each ship at range 1 suffers 1 damage. Feedback Array, during the combat phase, instead of performing any attacks, you may receive 1 Ion Token and suffer 1 damage to choose 1 enemy ship at range 1. That ship suffers 1 damage. Similar to the Darth Vader crew card. 
uh, IG-2000. You have the pilot ability of each other friendly ship within with the IG-2000 upgrade card in addition to your own pilot ability. That's a title, no cost with that. Experimental interface, once per round. After you perform an action, you may perform one free action from an equipped upgrade card with the action header. Then receive one stress token. Okay, so that concludes the Wave 6 preview. This is a very brief sneak peek at the Imperial Raider. There isn't a lot of information on this particular expansion, but it's going to be part of the epic or cinematic wave. I've already covered the Rebel Transport, I've already covered the Tantive 4, but here is a look at the Imperial Raiders. You can see it's a huge ship, comes with the uh, Imperial Raider and a TIE Advanced. And I like the box art, the colors are really cool and eye-catching. So here's a look at the ship there on its base. Some more pictures for you. As you can see, it comes with the TIE Advanced. So a lot of different shield tokens there. Um, maneuver template with the five range ruler. And it's kind of hard to see those cards down there, but definitely comes with a lot of different abilities. Looks like it comes with more TIE Advanced pilot cards, just like the Rebel Transport did with the X-Wing. All right. Now here's a quick look at one of those cards, Commander Alozin, TIE Advanced, uh, stats 2332. At the start of the combat phase, you may acquire a target lock on an enemy ship at range 1. It's an automatic thing, passive ability. You don't need to spend an action to do it. So it's sort of like Darth Vader, um, but you have to be at range 1 in order to use it. Darth Vader, for those of you that don't know, can do two actions on his turn. So with this, if you're at range one, you can do a free target lock, and then you can uh, do something else. So you can, in effect, have two actions. But you have to be at range one with this guy in order to do it. Cost of 25. Some upgrade cards for you. TIE dash or slash X1. This is the TIE advanced title. Your upgrade bar gains the sensor upgrade icon. If you equip a sensor upgrade, its squad point cost is reduced by four to a minimum of zero. Finally, the Advanced Targeting Computer, TIE Advanced Only. When attacking with your primary weapon, if you have a target lock on the defender, you may add one crit result to your roll. If you do, you cannot spend target locks during this attack. This has a cost of 5. So, again, being able to add a crit result to your roll, that is just very powerful, but it comes with a high cost. 5 uh, total upgrade points there. Alright, so I think that's it. As always, thanks for watching, folks. It's always appreciated. If you guys want to see more content, let me know. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.